And then I'm going to start playing around with, I think, vertical here. Yeah, just to show a little bit more of that sky. I got a nice flap. I end up cropping the sky out anyway in post, but it worked out nicely. I zoomed a little wider to include more of that sky, the advantage of a zoom lens, and then darken that exposure. And then in the post process, I got something I'm really happy with. And still get that soft rim light, get this guy preening, nice glow on the feathers, and you get something like that. And this is important. This is what you're gonna notice when you watch me shooting is constantly trying different stuff. Hey, good morning, everybody. Just got out of the marsh. It was a beautiful morning here and it, the skies have cleared out now, but as you saw, or you will see during the shoot, there was a mix of clouds and sun. We had some spoonbills that came in. We really concentrated on them because um, they're not real common here in the marsh. In fact, I think, that's, I think that's the first time I've ever shot them here. Emily shot them here in the past, but yeah, this is Emily's private marsh, and it's uh, no, need, no scouting needed, basically. Uh, she's shot here for years, so she kind of knows the area and has shown it to me. So we were able to come in and just make the best of it and really take advantage of the light. As you'll see, we did a lot of shooting into the light, trying to take advantage of backlight and such. And I also had the 100 to 400, so I was able to zoom around and change composition and stuff like that. There were other birds that were mixed in there, but the spoonbill were definitely the highlight of the show. So we took advantage of that. And they were pretty cooperative, so we were able to slowly move around, which you'll see and we were able to kind of approach a little bit closer, change some perspectives, go a little wider, a little tighter, just really mix it up nice and just pay attention to the bird's behavior and that sort of thing. So that was it. It was a classic morning in the marsh with some birds. Those birds were tolerant, but not as tolerant as some. So what we didn't see were the really cooperative tricolored herons and sometimes little blue herons that'll walk right up to you. We didn't have those this morning, but uh, this gives you at least a good idea of what it's like to be in this marsh. Now, Keep in mind this marsh is very special. Uh, the birds here tend to be more tolerant than they are in most places. And I've experienced and shot in similar marshes like this in New Jersey, uh, but they're really hard to find. And so what I want you to take a look at here and take notice when you're watching the video is, notice how short most of the grass is here. And you can see as I'm standing, well, you can't see my feet, but um, you can see this little rock behind me here. Most of the grass is only maybe this high, some this high. What I've found with marshes like this and do not take this as a guarantee. So always be careful if you can have somebody with you, if you're gonna check out getting into a marsh like this. Um, but in general, shorter grass marshes have a firmer bottom and you're able to just walk throughout it. So for most of what you can see here, we can walk this with no issue and not sinking in. But if you just go around the corner here and get closer to where the main river is that comes in and feeds it, all of a sudden there's a point where you hit and it turns into incredibly soft mud. You'll sink up to your knees, pass that into your waist, and you can get stuck and it's a serious problem. It could be you know pretty dangerous, especially if you're by yourself. So if you are gonna entertain going into something like that, please be cautious, be careful, take your time, uh, walk carefully, and just make sure it's all right. But once you start to learn these marshes, and I've experienced them in New Jersey, I've done the same thing where I just walk out all over the marsh, it's a pretty special experience because you can get out in with these birds. Instead of working the peripheral and trying to shoot in that way, you can get out in the marsh, lay down, be in their habitat, and kind of be with those birds, which is a really special thing. and it's. Uh, especially when they start coming into you and kind of like acting like you're not there. So uh, I definitely recommend trying it out, experimenting, doing some scouting and researching into marshes like this if you have them nearby. Uh, but just like I said, I just want to say it many times, just be very, very careful because you can get stuck. Uh, one other thing that's interesting about these marshes like this is that they are for the most part non-tidal, which is really cool. So again, like I said, right around the bend is a river that feeds all of this marsh and that's tidal every day, up, down, just like the normal tides. But the water that we see in here that we're shooting in doesn't really fluctuate with that normal tide. The only time we've kind of been able to figure out that we think it is, is like when there's really extreme high and low tides, then the water levels get affected in here. But even that has been confusing. We haven't really been able to tie it to those tides exactly. So I'm not really sure, honestly, what controls the water level in these marshes. But the cool thing is, for the most part, once you find these I, I just basically call them non-tidal pools that pretty much always have water in them for the most part. Uh, the nice thing is you don't have to worry about the tides. You can just go in at, at sunrise, sunset, whatever's working out for you. Uh, generally here at this particular one, sunrise is the key. Way more birds than sunset, although we've had some success at sunset sometimes as well. All right, so that's it. That's everything I can think to share for this one in the morning. And we plan on coming back again tomorrow, so I'll give you an update on that one.
got into the marsh really early on this one. It was pretty dark and there were immediately a bunch of wood storks and two spoonbills far out in the marsh here. This is the marsh in Hilton Head. It's a private marsh that Emily has access to so the both of us were in there on this particular morning. So here we go. My goal at this point was to work up to the edge of the water because if I got low at this point there was going to be too much stuff in the way and I wouldn't be able to get full reflections. So whenever I'm shooting a marsh situation like this that is my goal. So you can see I'm getting low here and it was close enough that I got mostly water. There's a little bit of foreground in the bottom bottom there but just kind of checking out the birds here. There's the spoonbills. And you can see the shutter speed and ISO are set for really dark. I was shooting at 13th of a second. Now, this was mostly just to get a couple of test shots, but in looking through the culling process later on, I did get some sharp, usable images. I also was on auto ISO from the previous thing I was shooting, so I switched over to full manual because I wanted to just have full control over the settings. And in lighting like this, the lighting conditions aren't changing. So, it was too far away to get anything good. Moved up a little bit. And here you can start to see it get a little bit better. Got a little bit closer. The wood storks did start moving around a little bit. Some of that probably due to my movement. Other is just, that's what they do. Uh, I've watched these birds long enough to know that they just hang out in there overnight. And then in the morning they all eventually just fly away, even if you're not near them. So right now, just trying to concentrate on the spoonbills because they are somewhat rare in these locations. And trying to work around the houses as well. And there we go. Get a nice shot of this guy isolated. Crop the house out. Final edit comes out quite nice. Tried a little bit vertical, but what I realized as I was shooting it and more when I was calling everything is just having that white sky either in the reflection or not is just too much. Crows were quite loud, as you can hear. <laughs> Alright, so time to switch to horizontal. But you can see how nice and calm everything is here. I still do want to get closer, but this early I'm just going to give everything time to get used to us. There was also a great blue heron, which is also not that common in this particular marsh. They're very common birds there, so I fired off a few of that. At this point, I was looking at the symmetry. Look at these birds. Two birds on the left facing in, two birds on the right mostly facing in if it wasn't for that one spoon bell on the right. I was waiting and hoping that one would lift its head, but it was just tucked in resting and never happened. But looking for symmetry like that in the shot is a great thing, especially when I'm dealing with flocks. So now it's time to move in. Instead of crawling, I just stood up, stayed crouched, really slow walking and I'm watching the birds behavior if any of them start to move too fast I stop and kind of hold still a tricolored heron flew in to the right that's what I was looking at there and then back to these guys paying attention to the behavior and just trying to get in a little bit closer you can see the wood stork there flapping and my there one just took off but again just knowing these birds that's what they're going to do anyway. So it's just a little bit of move closer and then settle back down and get low again, get that low perspective. And now I'm actually starting to get a little bit cleaner because of some of these wood storks leaving. I can isolate some of the birds a little bit better. There's a tricolored running around back there. So really at this point, I'm just playing with exposures, just trying to get my shutter speed a little higher and the ISO a little lower. So it's a kind of balancing act there. But I know I have plenty of time, so I'm not going to rush any of this. So here we go, trying to get some symmetry out of these spoonbills, but nothing great. And when we cut back to it in a second here, you'll see the background is a little close to the subjects for the distance I'm at. So you can see here, not a lot of background separation, but this looks decent on this wood stork. So I'll compose him on the right of the frame, give him space in the direction he's looking, and get a couple shots. I tried tracking this guy. It's kind of silly at 30th of a second. I thought maybe I'd get some motion blur. I shot a few, but as you'll see in the culling, or if you've already watched that, those ended up not working out. But hey, it's digital. You might as well try, right? Okay, now I got up into the water's edge, and now it's time to start moving in just a little bit more. I believe at this point all wood storks have left. They've just flown off for the morning, so now it's just a spoonbill, so I'm keeping an eye on them, watching that behavior. Switch sides with you. 
so I can place in foreground. And then you hear me ask Emily if I can move over around her. Basically, I was going in front of her, uh, and I didn't want to get in her way. But I wanted to get some of this foreground in play for these spoonbills to see if that would make it a little bit more interesting. Just kind of looking around there. And so just trying to shift over to the right, and you'll see in just a minute, I'm going to put those little points of grass in between me and the spoonbills. Let's get that low perspective. Always making sure I'm shooting nice and low here. Let the water calm down. Nothing in there yet, no foreground, but you can see it just start to show on the right, so I didn't move over far enough. Just watching these spoonbills. The big problem here is that bright spot on the reflected water on the bottom left and on that top left. Now, I can crop some of that out, and I know I can also fill it in in post. And at this point, I have no idea how long these birds are going to last, so I'm taking these shots anyway. Because now I'm up to 60th of a second at 2000 ISO. It's a bit more manageable. I know these are shots I can definitely use, definitely get sharp. I'm laying down on a nice stable platform there. That's going to get me those shots. And both of them have their heads up. This is the first time they've really had both of their heads out for a little bit. So I'm just taking advantage of that, taking some, some shots just in case they're going to leave. But now I'm going to start actually trying to shift to the right. Look at this. So just kind of crawling over to the right, staying nice and low. And I'm moving over to see if I can get that foreground in play. There we go. Now you start to see the foreground coming in on the right-hand side of the frame. Still not quite enough. And I noticed there was a split in the grasses. So I'm going to try and line up the right bird in between those two bits of grasses there. So like the main clump of grass on the right and that piece on the left. Just to get a little bit more depth to the photo. Took a couple of these shots. Ended up not loving them later. But at least something to try, right? Instead of just staying in the same spot, taking the same shot over and over again. It's all about moving around, seeing what you can do. And I'm going to try moving around and seeing what else I can do here. There we go. I decided I didn't like that opening, so let's just put the bird right there and try some of that. Back to the other bird that's just out more often. That one that's tucked in, it's like once you get a couple of shots of it tucked in, I don't need a ton of them. And now the sky is starting to change. As the sun was rising, the color started getting interesting. And I started going vertical because of that interesting color in the sky. So now you'll be able to see both views. I'm going to darken the exposure, try and get a little bit more something in that sky or in the reflected water, and just play around with some different exposures there. Doing some vertical composition, shooting away. There we go. If I'm putting a lot of the sky in, look at that, trying to darken it down and see the sky, but the bird gets really dark. And so I'm just bouncing back and forth here, increasing the shutter speed, dropping the ISO. That's the goal here. Try and get the ISO as low as possible and then keep that shutter speed up. I zoomed a little wider to include more of that sky, the advantage of a zoom lens, and then darken that exposure. And then in the post process, I got something I'm really happy with. And I shot that darker on purpose just to be able to get that detail in the sky. So you saw how I darkened everything down there. But what I should have done is drop the ISO like this right here. So I did that after the fact. But then, of course, the spoonbills didn't give me quite as good a position. But these are better settings. 200th of a second, 250 ISO. That lower ISO going to give me more dynamic range. Looks like a tricolor just dropped in there. How fun. But tough to focus on. And he's not as light, so it doesn't really stand out. But we'll try it anyway. Get it? Tricolored? Try. Ha <laughs> ha. Bad photographer jokes. In any case, you can really see the sky starting to get beautiful. There we go. Let's try just a portrait. Zooming right in. Now, manage that shutter speed, right? I was at 25th of a second. No need to be there. So bump the ISO back up. Get the shutter speed up. Nothing wrong with those settings. Make sure it's a little bit more level there. Try and get an interesting composition and grab a shot or two there. And then I just keep bouncing around between these birds. They're hanging out and staying in the same spot. So that means they're comfortable. The scene is beautiful here. And I did notice that that tricolor was staying in that one spot. So I started shuffling to the right because I wanted to play with symmetry and try and put him in the middle of the two background spoonbills. So that's what's going on here. As soon as I noticed that he was not moving, I started trying to move to make that happen. I got close here, but not great. 
a little bit of move over and the bird turned for me and there we go now we got the symmetry and then he ran around and went behind them so I shot a few there but again didn't love those now the sun's starting to peek out. You can see it breaking the horizon, and now it's all about getting the bokeh in the foreground. That's why Emily's shooting so close to me. We both know that there's a very small window to get this look. There you go, look at that. See that glow coming in over the top and in the water down there in the foreground? There you go, that's a better look at it. It's all about having that sun lined up. So if either of us are further to the left or right, you're not gonna see that same glow. That's why we're both basically almost touching lenses there to try and get that perspective. And then I'm gonna start playing around with, I think vertical here. Yeah, just to show a little bit more of that sky. I got a nice flap. I end up cropping the sky out anyway in post, but it worked out nicely. And then I just start playing with this vertical, trying to see if I can get something interesting with the exposure, but the sky is too bright at this point. So you can see I'm going darker, shutter speed up, dropping that ISO a little bit. There we go, and I'm going really dark, trying to manage this, see if I can get something in the water. But it's still not working out exactly as I want. But I just keep playing, trying different exposures. Shoot some neutral, shoot some darker, shoot some lighter. If you have cooperative subjects, why not? And at this point, it's time to start moving in a little bit closer. The birds are just preening. They're showing no indication of being, you know, worried by us, so... It's just time to move in a little closer and then settle in, and now we're getting some good stuff. Concentrate on the bird that's out, not tucked in. Try some interesting compositions, darken that exposure, and boom, got that image. Edit up quite nicely. Then playing with the zoom. Trying different exposures. I was gonna try a bracket here. So going really dark so I could get the sun, even though you can't see the bird in the frame. I know it would come back in post and then I try some lighter. They didn't end up working out great, but at least experimenting with that. And this is important. This is what you're gonna notice when you watch me shooting is constantly trying different stuff. I'm not just sitting there taking the same shot over and over again. Different compositions, different exposures, different positions if possible. But of course, sometimes it is nice to just sit there and watch these birds, isn't it? And I'd say this, enjoy the sounds of nature, but you also get the sounds of humans in the background. I took this opportunity to start moving in a little bit more. I wanted to start playing with wider focal lengths and getting a little closer. And again, as you just saw, those birds were very relaxed. And so whenever I'm doing this, the both of us, me and Emily, were slowly crawling in. She was just to my left, just behind me. And so we just take our time, really watch these birds. And you'll see through the viewfinder in a second here, they're going to be quite relaxed, not bothered by us one bit. Look at that. One's still preening. The other one's just resting. Again, I take this opportunity to start crawling and making my way in. Taking my time watching the bird's behavior. As long as they're relaxed, I can move and just keep closing, getting a little closer. Wide open right now, mind you. No cover, no camouflage, no nothing. It's just all about slow movement and watching the bird's behavior. And here we go, now we're in for some nice close portraits. In some beautiful light. Just playing with some different compositions here and now watching the lineup between the birds, between the foreground bird and the background bird. Enjoying this beautiful sky. Trying some wider. I really have been enjoying this 1-400 to lens lately, being able to zoom around. And now I'm going to start going darker exposure. I'm noticing the clouds are kind of covering the sun somewhat. And that's allowing me to kind of take things down, keep things dim, get a little darker here. And 
and still get that soft rim light. Get this guy preening. Nice glow on the feathers. Shoot a bunch in there. I went nice and dark with it. Realized it was too dark, but I'm trying to manage the shutter speed and ISO. Get that shutter speed up and you get something like that. Kind of a bummer this other one was just so stationary and in the way <laughs> but that happens a lot and i could have moved left to clear out the other bird but the lighting would have changed so i really like this lighting and it was like i said earlier all about lining up that sun so that was the important part and why i stayed there and then just tried to work around that bird or take some shots of it because you can see look at that bright spot of sun in the wide view there it's directly behind them that's what's giving me that beautiful glow if I move off to the left or right, I lose that quite a bit. So staying in this lineup is kind of an important part to get the look that I was going for. There's nothing wrong with moving to the left or right. You can totally get shots that are fine, but I was specifically trying to get that beautiful rim light, that wonderful glow that you see around these birds. And that's why I stayed right where I did there. And at this point, I already had a bunch of close shots. The clouds are getting a little bit more dense. So you can see the sky is starting to be properly exposed with the birds here. Now the birds are dark, but I'm getting closer to getting exposure in the sky. And so I'm playing around trying to get that ISO really low, zooming wider, trying to incorporate more of that habitat and frankly, that beautiful sky tough to focus. So I went for single point focus right there instead of the auto tracking, the, the eye tracking, and then just lock that in. I shot a few of those at that view. But then I wanted to move in and zoom a little wider. What that does is it makes the birds larger in the frame while still being able to zoom out and show more of the set, uh, scenery and habitat in the background. So that's why I took a few and moved in a little bit more here. Now it's really slow crawling, staying really low and watching these birds. So it's going to take a little while to get in, but slowly you can see the ripples in the water from the movement. I'm getting closer and closer, and then I'll be able to zoom a little wider and you'll see, get the shot I'm after. There it is. Now that I had that wide shot the way I wanted it, it's time to lighten things up a little bit and then start concentrating on the birds and somewhat less of the scenery. So zoom back into 400 millimeter and start getting some of these tighter portraits like this in the really nice light. Beautiful soft glow. They're lining up quite nicely, the two birds now. And then as you see, I'm just playing with my exposure there, going with some slower shutter speeds. Look, I'm at 160th of a second there. I could totally dial up that ISO and get the shutter speed higher, but there's no reason for that. These birds are just standing there, barely moving. There's no action. So might as well keep the ISO down. 160th of a second is plenty. Unless they take off, then of course I would miss that shot. But right now I'm shooting portraits. I'm not shooting action. So I'm going to set my camera accordingly. Try and incorporate that reflection, except for the fact that that bright white bottom left corner is killing me. Just notice another bird flying over there. It's a white ibis you saw drop in, but there's also some tricolors over there. Let's see if we can do a nice scenic composition of him. Slow that shutter speed down. There's more of those ibis dropping in. Oh, it's so fun being in the marsh. Back to the Spoonies. So lighter exposure right now. I'm exposing properly for the bird, letting the rim light kind of blow out. Everything's a little bit lighter, a little bit more of that glow feel versus that dark moody feel. And so again, just a great opportunity to mix things up. And I end up really liking one of these. So here, let me zoom in all the way to 400, get a nice tight shot. I'm gonna try and crop out the reflection because I don't want that bright white water down there. And there you go. Yep. 
pine warbler singing in the background. It's peaceful, isn't it, guys? Just laying here with some beautiful birds. This calm, quiet morning. Except for all the sounds of construction and stuff in the background. But hey, what are you going to do? So this is nearing the end of the shoot. Actually, uh, Emily and I had to be out uh, at a certain point. We had a time limit on this shoot, so we didn't get to stay and continue to shoot. So just taking advantage of what I have here. These spoonbills, as I mentioned, are not common in this marsh. I don't get to shoot them here, and I've never shot them in conditions like this anywhere I've ever photographed them with calm, reflected water, nice soft backlight glow. And so that's why I concentrate on, on these birds, even though there was a lot of other birds there. Here I am playing again with a little bit darker exposure, trying to incorporate the reflection. There's just no way around that bright spot at the bottom. I can't get any lower without dipping my camera in the water. The only fix would be to back up and have a longer lens, but I only go to 400. So if I had a five or a six, I could compress that background, get all the reflection and lose that bright spot at the bottom. But in this circumstance, I just had to work with what I had and I was quite happy with what I was getting anyway. So not a complaint, just pointing out what you can and what you cannot get. Here comes another fun tricolor. They're always a little bit more active. So track him around a little bit, get that shutter speed up 500th of a second and just track him around for a little bit. And this is where the eye tracking is a joy. You can see I'm composing the image and keeping the bird out to the one side. Then switch back to the spoonies. At this point, I had moved a little too fast, so you see a little sign of stress there. The one closer bird untucked and started to walk away. They settled back in, started preening again, so not too much disturbance, but I definitely didn't want to keep pushing anymore, so we stayed put in that position and just finished up the shoot with these birds where they were. trying to incorporate that bokeh and then this, you can see there you go the slow walk away and they just cautiously move away and so I didn't bother chasing we just stayed there let them do their thing and that was it for the morning so thanks for watching I hope you guys enjoyed this make sure you check out the culling the final cull and the post process on the different photos from this particular shoot